Hello, I'm Mr. G. The G is not for Google, but it fits. And thank you for joining me on a journey where we learn from different EdTech leaders. Welcome to Aced Tech. Hello, everybody, and welcome. How's everybody doing? Thank you so much for being here today. And those of you listening in, thank you so much for joining me. I want to talk about today's guest star. Our guest today is originally from New Zealand. She was an English teacher in Tokyo for five years, and then she became a published writer in Australia, where she has lived for the past 20 years. And the last three years, she has been working with schools in Australia, Singapore, and the U.S. to use the family book form technology. I want to say welcome, Carrie. Thank you so much for being part of my show. Would you like to introduce yourself? Anything I missed? Um, no, thank you, Mr. G. Great to um, be on your show, and I appreciate um, sharing my technology with your audience. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit about the technology first. So uh, if you could show that first slide we talked about. Um, okay, so we're ready to get started. All right. Let's talk about the ACE topic. Okay. All right. Um, so you've got my slide up there. So um, family book form technology um, instead of students always using Word or Google Docs for writing projects, um, they can use my template page and it's got a question and answer boxes to collect personal stories into a digital book. Um, but it's, it's more than just writing and book creating technology. It's family communication project based learning. And um, it's more about bl blending, it, blending online project based learning for students to achieve, achieve transformational learning and document that learning as they're, as they're doing it. So as a writer and former English teacher, I know um, that it's vital for us to um, focus our lessons on literacy and, and that is vital for us. Um, but, you know, uh, education is undergoing rapid change and especially in the current COVID environment where learning is going to go completely online, teachers need to deliver curriculum lessons and ensure kids are motivated and have the ability to do those lessons and prove that they were doing any learning at all. So um, education has typically been about filling young people up with all the information, facts and techniques they need to face the world. But now education is more about the blending of filling kids up and also fueling students' ideas and passions and being relevant to um, the world at the moment and in their future workplaces. So teachers can't be everywhere and online and instructing at all times. And it's been a huge problem lately in this COVID environment of, um, of how, do, how to instruct and um, make sure listen, lessons are being delivered. So, um, you know, with these projects, uh, teachers can use technology as a plug-in solution. They can trust that it adheres to privacy requirements and to the SAMER and ISTE standards and allows teachers to give agency to the students to personalise their own learning um, and differentiate for their ability and collaborate with um, people with a much wider circle than they, they normally could. And the whole experience leads to transformational learning specific to that student. And, you know, engagement can be very difficult as students, you know, have access to anything online nowadays. And how do we as educators compete with the excitement of online games and social media and content on demand? And so many people ask me why my technology is um, for family communication projects specifically. And the reason is that it, I wanted to specifically address um, the need to engage students in activities that are exciting and as emotional as what those competing products are. And so research shows that uh, when families are involved in their child's learning, um, those young people are always going to do better, not just academically, but in everything. So I particularly wanted high school students to do these communication projects with their families because it's specifically in those early teenage years that kids start turning away from their family um, 
and more towards their peer group for guidance on what their values are and their identity and, and things like that. And so the family book from technology is trying to bring fam bring kids back to their family, ideally in face-to-face -face communication. So, you know, schools have been getting students to interview their grandparents or someone special in their life for many decades. We all know the huge cross-curricular and social-emotional benefits from doing this, but usually it's in primary school. And the process is quite amateurish. You know, kids hand write and maybe glue some pictures onto a big piece of cardboard. But, you know, that's not very um, valuable for long and it's not easy to share. So um, I wanted to automate that whole process, automate it for the teacher, the students and the families um, and make it more of a 21st century activity using technology as a tool so students could achieve so much more than they could before. Um, and it creates a, a polished end product that teachers can give feedback on, they can give it a grade, um, the students can include it in their portfolios for proof of learning and reflection, and books have longevity for the community and, and are valuable to the parents. So that's sort of the summary of the project-based learning. So back to you, Mr. G. Awesome, thank you. So my understanding is, well, first going back to the family part, right now I have a, a six-year-old and a four-year-old, so I'm, I'm dreading that point in time when they're going to be very independent, but they have to be. It's one of the things that's just going to happen. Yeah. But th th this is awesome. The way we bring back the family together with your technology, that's interesting. And um, you also mentioned earlier that uh, your technology scaffolds the whole process. How does that work? Yeah, um, the scaffolding I, I initially thought would just be for students, but it's turned out that it's um, it's for the teacher, the student, and the families and the community. So, um, you know, everyone has different objectives in that um, you know supply chain. So the teachers you now need to make sure that they're teaching you know, the curriculum requirements and addressing the school's priorities. The, the students need to um, have their learning objectives and. Families, you know, are busy and and have got their own objectives as well. So the scaffolding for teachers is that um, we've partnered with Google, so it's easy for a teacher to assign a project to a whole class or year group. Um, but even if you're not a Google school, uh, gener the projects generate a unique URL link, and you can just share that on any platform um, that you communicate with students. And the the scaffolding for students. Um, is that the teacher sends them an automated link that they can sign up through their Google Gmail or any email. And the students see either a template page and they follow that template page or um, to contribute maybe to a collaborative class book. Um, or they see a dashboard and they can and uh, where they create their own book and it's a question and answers. So similar to any online game students play nowadays, the instructions are built in. So students can work independently, they follow the question prompts. Um, or make up their own questions. And they can differentiate by using the speech to text or contributions from others. Um, and students of various abilities can rely more or less on their family's help or other people's help. So the students are able to work asynchronously at their own pay pace to collect a lot of content that can enrich synchronous online lessons or face-to-face -face lessons. So the COVID-19 um, and Me collaborative class book has been popular lately where teachers invite a class of students to contribute their feelings and experiences about how COVID-19 has affected them or their family. So students, um, would, the teacher sends that uh, link to the student they, and they open that up and they see a template page with instructions from the teacher about what to contribute. So this is popular also for um, creating maybe the favourite recipes book. And so the whole class can contribute their favourite food um, and stories about why that food is special to them um, and maybe photos of them cooking the food and things like this. So it just is a way for a teacher to easily collect a whole um, class's content into a book that can then be used in the classroom um, or sent out to parents or celebrated in one way or another. So another one was a, um, a STEAM project where um, it was celebrating Mother's Day, for example, when the kids all wrote um, a poem about their mother, they painted a picture of their mother, and then they uh, contributed that. So 
It was also an opportunity for the principal to write um, uh, an introduction to that book and the teacher uh, also documented the activities in the classroom and, and contributed chapter. So that whole book was the kids celebrating their mothers, but it was also a way for the school to sort of highlight some of the progressive initiatives they're doing at the school and that was posted on their newsletter and on their website and it's a way for the school to sort of showcase what they're doing. Um, so the scaffolding for the families um, is necessary as well it turns out. I had some great feedback from a boy last year and um, he was saying that he was frustrated that it was hard to pin his father down to ask him these questions and can you imagine if the boy didn't have this project then it never would happen. And then the years go by and, and communication sort of goes by the way. And we don't realise that this is happening because we're so busy. So the scaffolding is also for families. Um, and, uh, you know, families are getting smaller now and more fragmented and often family communication suffers because of this. So um, uh, a recent example of this project at the boys' school, the Director of Teaching and Learning said they wanted to address low literacy levels at the school. Um, but they also wanted to improve the uh, family engagement at the school as well, which was lacking. So they used the family book form in their English life writing unit, uh, where the students were required to write a biography or autobiography. But instead of the students writing onto a blank page, um, which was difficult for anybody, but least of all for low literacy level kids, um, they didn't need to write onto a blank page, they used my template page. And so they could uh, speak their story if it was an autobiography or they interviewed their family members um, to collect content from other people. And um, some of their relatives spoke other languages and this had created its own set of problems because kids then are limited of what they can communicate with grandparents if they're speaking other languages. Um, so the students can collect the story in the native uh, language from their family and it automatically translating transcribes directly into their book. Um, so, you know, that's kids using technology as a tool to, to really enhance their, their communication with their family. Um, and then the family book form also scaffolds class enrichment because the kids are collecting these audio files from their family, their stories about maybe migration or um, first jobs and you know, what was life was like. And so um, it can be included in lessons and sort of like a modern day show and tell where students can take turns playing their audio files. They can show the text of their book on the smart board. And, um, and not everybody has grandparents or extended family. So this is an opportunity for all the class to enjoy real voice stories. Um, and hearing about migration and, and, you know, stories of struggle or stories of success. And so um, if it's a literacy lesson, the teachers can focus the students' attention on writing and collaboratively editing the tech and about uh, sentence mechanics and, um, and spelling and things. And students are interested to learn because the stories are personal and authentic and, and the whole family is motivating them um, to create a polished book that they can cherish forever. So the teachers don't need to try and motivate the kids um, to be interested because they are interested and the families are motivating them. Um, if it's a history class and the students' original content can relate to migration or conflict or how a town started and, um, uh, you know, if it's science and it's primary source uh, original content for a research project. So um, the kids can't copy and paste this information from the internet because it doesn't exist. Um, and, and so the, all they're doing is going collecting original content and then that can enrich lessons. So the scaffolding for the communities is that um, uh, community, communities can fund projects at their schools. And so, for example, one project we did with year nine students, um, the year nine students, they were a, a mix of extension English and history students and some were doing for a community service. And uh, the teacher approached a nearby elder care um, business and offered for the students to uh, create those residents that live there memoir. And so the kids went there uh, once a week for an hour and um, were matched with a resident and they interviewed their resident once a week and collected the spoken stories. So, um, you know, they didn't have to uh, worry about trying to write fast enough or, or pay attention um, to get all the details right. They, you know, the recordings were collecting all of that. And when they got back home, they could, um, or back to school, they could edit that content and it just made it a lot easier for them. Um, so, yeah, back to you, Carlos. 
All right. So <laughs> you're flicking around on my website. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. As I was looking through that project that you talked about with uh, seniors, and that that's awesome. Uh, yeah. It's very collaborative. So it's not just collaborative uh, within the students or the class itself, but uh, collaborative in the community. That's right. That, I like that. That's an awesome idea. Yeah. And um, so I have that thing about making sure that it complies with FERPA, COPA, and all those uh, privacy things. Um, so two questions I have here is um, technology. What are the technology requirements and how does it work with student privacy? Yeah, so that is a big deal at the moment. And as a Google partner, we had to make sure that we did adhere, adhere to all of those requirements for student um, data collection and, and storage. And so we um, use uh, Amazon servers. And so the, the student content, we collect the bare minimum. So it's usually just their, their email and that's attached to their book. Um, so we don't collect any financial data. There's no uh, geographical data or where, what school they're going to. So it's the bare minimum. Um, if it's a Google school and the kids are using their Google sign up, we don't collect anything. Um, so and it's usually held on servers within the um, geographical area from where the, the person usually is. And so uh, if the customers are in America, then to held, their data is held in American servers. Um, and so we don't attract any um, hacker interest because we don't hold any uh, financial information. We don't hold any private information. There's nothing really held at all. Um, and we're also a part of the uh, student privacy pledge. And so they've gone over our website and, and how our technology works. And, and so we do adhere to um, all of those privacy requirements. Um, the the uh, books are held uh, for one year. And if you don't want to renew, then they're automatically deleted. So we adhere to all of those things. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, um, here's some exciting news. Uh, there's an ambassadorship for Family Book Form, and I recently became an ambassador. So speaking of which, uh, you were mentioning that there is a free version and a paid version. And uh, if you're going to be signing up either way, thank you so much for allowing me to join your ambassadorship. Yes. My my ambassador code is 6KFM6P. So during the sign-up process, use my ambassador code. Thank you so much. Yeah. So um, am I able to just show the website? At the yes, go ahead. So you can see me, my um, cursor on the page, can you? Yes. Yeah, so you just sign up here as a teacher for the first time and um, that will allow you to either sign up with Google or sign up with a Gmail. Um, so you go through, the next step is entering um, your name and I, that step is where you can enter Carlos's um, ambassador code and that means that uh, you have opportunities to get discounts on projects in the future. Um, and uh, uh, and help with your projects and things like that. So if you go to the main uh, familybookform.com website, you can see a lot of um, examples of uh, projects that have been done, some case studies. And so here's some project examples that we've done. Uh, this is the STEAM project that I spoke about, and it was years uh, five and six at a primary school. And this is the project where it was a Mother's Day Project. And so when all the kids contribute their content, it automatically propagates into this um, contents page and you can see their content. Um, and so the principal, you can see here, she did um, an introduction to the book. Uh, my internet's going slow. Uh, she did an introduction and then the teacher contributed a chapter on uh, her STEAM research that she was doing and she presented this at um, conferences in Canada and Australia. So that was documenting the STEAM uh, aspect of her project. And this is every kid that was invited in the class to contribute their poem about their mother and their picture just automatically propagated into the book. So this is a way for teachers to very easily collect content um, into a fun 
book. In this, in this instance, it's uh, just a fun little book. But if it's a more valuable topic like um, COVID-19 and me, for example, uh, then there may be more interest in the community to share that. Um, and also the family, here's an example of the family recipe book. So this is where um, a year seven student, she um, invited her family to contribute their favorite recipes and they automatically propagate into the book. And so she did an introduction about who her family were. They were from Europe and, um, and the, their, fa their favorite recipes and the stories about why those recipes um, were important to their family and their culture. And you can see um, on this page, this is the German version of this. And so you can translate that. Um, and so it's kids are using technology as a tool for something that's quite um, productive for the family. Um, and so those families typically buy those books. And this is an example of um, Grandad's memoir. And this is uh, they're on the template page um, as the kids are answering the questions on the template page. Those um, answers just automatically propagate into different chapters and sections of the book. And so um, <clears throat> they're just automatically collated and formatted into chapters and sections so that it looks like a, a polished uh, digital book. And that digital book can be downloaded into a PDF. So other examples on this uh, on the website, there's a uh, testimonial from a San Jose teacher who did it for homeschooling and online teaching. There's little uh, how-to videos. And here's some case studies here. And this is um, the year seven uh, student, Nikita, doing her family recipe book there. And so you can click into there and see more details about um, these projects. And um, this was going into the elder care facility where they interviewed the residents and, <clears throat> excuse me, they, when they did this uh, book presentation, so this is when the kids are presenting the, the finished memoir to each resident. Um, you know, there wasn't a dry eye in the house. It just everyone was just so blown away with how amazing the books turned out. And it, the, the kids got a lot of credit for doing an amazing project, but the technology actually makes it quite easy for them to do it. So it's an easy way for kids to get great recognition. Um, if you go up to the top, there's a school resources tab. And if you go into here, you can see two project ideas. Um, one is the collaborative book, and this is where the teacher can create a collaborative book with the class. And there's an explainer video there of how you can do a free project. Um, so the first book is free. Um, and you can that book is hosted as a digital book online for one year. And you have two hours of speech to text you can use. And um, um, the you can download the audio files and the PDF of the book as many times as you like. Um, and then the other project is the family book or the community service. So this is where the students are going and collecting content from their various family members or out into the community. So this might be a good project. Um, maybe, you know, there's limitations with COVID at the moment. I'm not sure what the restrictions are in America at the moment, but because I'm in Australia and so we're just getting another outbreak at the moment. And so things were good and now they're shutting down again. So go, kids going into the community might be limited at the moment, um, but in the future they can go, you know, the Black Lives Matter movement is a great topic, you know, especially now because kids can go and interview people um, about how does, what does Black Lives Matter uh, mean to them? You know, what are the personal family stories and life stories and lived experiences? And it's a way for kids to very easily collect personal stories and important um, oral histories into a polished book product. And um, I know there's funding at the moment in America through the libraries and museums fund. And um, if you uh, were doing a project where kids are collecting um, primary source historical data and it's going to be creating a book that can then be um, kept into in your school library or maybe the community library, then that is quite valuable. And so there's funding from um, the government through the libraries and museums uh, channel. So you can just ask your, your school administrators about access to that funding. But creating a, an original um, polished book that is valuable to um, more than just the school, but can be valuable to the wider community um, is quite important at the moment because 
it, it's giving voices to minority groups and people that don't normally get to express their stories. So it's a way to broaden not just um, the students' points of view and world world views, um, but it, it's a way for the whole community to then uh, have insight into who else is in their, our community, what, what is their lived experiences, what, what is their point of view. And so, I, you know, there's a lot of... Um, commentary in the moment at the moment in, in America especially about these um, extreme points of view and people becoming divided and so it's projects like this that allow kids to go and um, collect a group's um, stories and experiences and points of view and perspectives and sharing that in the classroom can be included for all sorts of subjects like history and social studies and not just English but it's a, it's a way to enrich those lessons and to, to get real voice, real stories, real authentic content into these lessons so that kids are engaged and they're interested in what why are we studying history? Because typically history can be quite a dry subject. So this is a way that you can make it quite um, personal and authentic for students. So there you go. That's, that's a, um, most of the website. There's videos here on how you can add a project and so the first book is free and you can um, sign up free enter Carlos's code as you're signing up and then go in for chance of uh, discounts in the future and then um, you can create your free uh, book I Carlos have we got time for me to sign in and show you what a teacher would do sure go ahead Okay, so if we're, um, you've already signed up as a teacher, so now we're going to sign in. And you would go straight to this dashboard. And this has got the how to videos there's how to create a collaborative book, how to um, create a project for a whole class or year group, and then how to integrate it into classrooms. So there's little snippet videos there. Um, when you first sign up, you won't have this because you haven't created a project yet, but as you create projects, they appear in your dashboard. So when you sign up um, for the first time, you can have a free try. And so this is um, what you would see when you're wanting to create a book. This is the book creating dashboard. And this is what students would see when you alloc um, allocate an assignment of them to create a book. And so um, they have this dashboard. So on the left-hand side is the structure of the book. And so they just um, answer the question. So here's the book cover. They answer the title, the author. They can upload a photo. The next tab is introduction. And so you click on that. And this is where they can either type or speak their introduction. And so they can click on the record button. And here is where they can um, choose what language they're going to be speaking their story in. So there's up to 200 languages. Um, they can start and, and stop the recording as much as they like. And when they return back to the book creating dashboard, there'd be a blue button here. And they can click that blue button and it automatically propagates the text into this uh, section of their book. In this case, it's the introduction section. And this has got the scaffolding that I spoke about where they can click on person and this automatically propagates four chapters here. And this is the scaffolding that allows students to um, follow these uh, guides and question prompts. So the questions can be turned off and on. Um, so if it's a family recipe book, maybe they don't need all the other um, uh, questions and, and sections about the family but um, so you can turn those questions off but if you turn them on um, it's for a family book the kids are interviewing their family so under each chapter it automatically propagates questions and answers in the boxes here and there's a um, template pages for photos so they can choose either one photo to a page two or four and they just upload those and they automatically um, go into their book so the next chapter is early years so all of these chapters can be edited um, and these are just prompts and so you can perhaps ask your students to go and interview one person and ask them uh, five topic uh, go through five topics and um, interview one family member or two family members you can structure um, the the amount of people or what uh, content they're collecting if you want to and so the kids then have um, uh, options of which topics they want to choose and under each topic there's different question 
And so it's up to the kids what they want to uh, interview their family about. And so it's just a, a templated page where they can type this, the answers, they can speak the answers, they can collect the answers from somebody else, um, and it automatically um, goes into those answer boxes. So with all this scaffolding, this is where you can go into the tab up the top here and they can um, view the digital book. So everything that has been entered into that book creating dashboard automatically gets propagated into a book here. And so you can see there's not much work done on this book yet, um, but it's automatically propagated into this digital book. And if you go back to the dashboard, then you can download a PDF, they can download the audio files, and, um, and that's where you can, if you download the PDF, you can print on demand at your own printer. But if you want a, a more of a professional book printed, then you can send for a quote. If this is a collaborative book <clears throat> that you're doing with your class, um, then you can just click on the collaborators tab and you can add um, collaborators, contributors to this book. And so here you can see the contributors that are invited to this book. And so if you're going to, you can upload um, a whole class um, list and it automatically propagates out to their emails or you can enter one by one and so this is where the kids if they're creating their family's favorite recipes book this is where they can invite aunties and uncles and different people to contribute their favorite recipe and this generates um, an automated email out to those people and they can just type what they want the person to contribute here and that gives that person the instructions on their template page and so you can see when students have contributed you can <clears throat> see what they've contributed you can edit that content and, um, and you can give reminders to kids that haven't contributed yet. So with this dashboard and this scaffolding, you can see that kids can um, see, <clears throat> excuse me, explainer videos. If they get confused as to what to do, they can watch how-to videos. So this is the, the scaffolding that's internally within the book dashboard. They can get writing help. Um, they can get technology help. <clears throat> and so this is how you can, um, Create your collaborative class book as a try and, <clears throat> excuse me, I'll just get a drink of water. <clears throat> and then <clears throat> if you want to create a project, then you can just click that and um, you can create a new project. And this is an example with a family recipe book. And each project that you create automatically generates a link here. And that's what you share with your students. So you can either share it through Classroom, you can email it to them. Um, however you communicate with kids and as they uh, click on that their licenses are redeemed and so there's a lot to um, take in at once and so you could just have a play around that's what the free try book is all about you just have a, a little go yourself and create maybe your classes COVID-19 and me book um, I'll show you an example of um, that project and if you go to the news tab of the website there's um, articles here and here's a, a recent high school that did their COVID-19 and me book and you can see um, the finished books here of what these kids created and the teacher just sent the automatic um, invite out to the kids and they automatically um, propagated into the different um, pages of the, the content page here and created a chapter of the book. And so the introduction was written by the teacher and the principal also contributed a chapter about how COVID had affected her as the principal of the school um, and photos of what was happening at the school at the time. And then each, um, each student had their uh, double page spread in the book and it, they spoke about uh, how COVID has affected them. So it's a great opportunity for, for you as teachers to collect the, the feelings and the experiences, the lived experiences from your students. And this is um, creating a, a historical record for your school and your community. And that can be included in the school's library. So you can create that uh, collaborative um, book with your class as an example, um, you know, for free if you want to. So back to That is awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So I just want to make sure I understand. Uh, it's uh, $10 per book. 
Um, yes, the first one is free, and then it's ten dollars to create a project. Okay. Um, ten dollars per book. So if you wanted to create another uh, collaborative class book, for example, that book is still just ten dollars, and then you can invite a whole class or up to three hundred students to contribute to that class book. But if the students are going to create their own families. A family recipe book, for example, then that's ten dollars per student, and that book is online for a year, and they can download a, a PDF, the audio files, and two hours speech to text with each book. And so, um, there's opportunities for the schools to create a fundraiser, especially with the family recipe book, because that's so popular. And so, the um, you know the example book here, the family recipe book, um, the the families often, when um, their child has made their their personalised family's recipe book, the family want to buy that recipe book. So there's an opportunity for schools to um, recoup the cost of uh, of the book if they want to. They can print on demand, or they can sell the PDF to the family to print, um, and they can recoup some of the the the, um, the outlay for that ten dollar book. Um, if it's a community project, then the community like that um, elder care business, they funded that project for the school to come into aged care and create their memoirs. So there's opportunities for the school and teachers to go into the community, maybe to the historical society or the local museum um, or uh, different uh, historical societies and church groups. And, you know, churches are paying for projects where there's the youth of that community are going and creating memoirs on elders in the community. So um, the communities pay for those projects. And so the school can get funding for that. Now, in the U.S., uh, there's this amazing organization called Donors Choose. And Donors Choose allow or helps teachers fund projects like this one. Now, $10 is very small fee, so you would have to get at least 10 students to be able to cover the minimum for Donors Choose. Donors Choose requires you to do a minimum project of $100. Right. So this would be awesome if you want to do 10 books. Yeah. Or a minimum of 10 books. It could be a maximum of whatever. So just for yeah. U.S., um, Teachers, if you're interested, uh, Donors Choose can also help fund these projects. Yeah, and can you imagine what amazing um, stories can come out? This is when we went to the aged care or the elder care business. There was people, you know, these old people in this home that are largely forgotten about, but you get a young person come in and then start spending some time talking to them and saving these amazing life experiences and stories of times gone by. And that, that's very, very valuable historical data for that town and for those families. And so the idea with this project is it's it's not just about creating a book. It's about saving history. And But at the same time, it's getting these kids engaged and talking and learning about who are the people in their family, who are the people in their town, why do I believe what I believe, um, you know, what, it, what are my values and... and it, it's vital emotional learning and and opening kids to other points of view that's really pivotal in making sure that we uh, become a, a harmonious society, I think. <laughs> what do you think, Carlos? That's true. I mean, one of the things that uh, I come to learn throughout the years is that if my system of beliefs is not challenged, then how do I know that what I believe is correct? Yeah. And, and it's good to know where you come from and why do you believe what you believe. Um, and the more that you get exposed to other people's lived experiences and other people's points of view, the more compassionate you become, the more empathetic you are. And so we're, we're living in a, in a society now that is aging very quickly and so about a quarter of the population is going to be over 65 in the next decade and who is going to be working in these aged care businesses who's going to be employing older people who's going to be um, 
you know, including older people in society, for example. And so we need to have young people now exposed to older people and empathise that they're still humans, they're, they're still important, they've, they've got um, a wealth of knowledge over their lifetime. And so this is, is part of scaffolding, getting kids to not just engage with the kids in their class, but engage with their family, but also engage with their community. And um, this is what the, the, these projects are scaffolding, not just the engagement, but that it's being documented. And this is a huge issue now with um, kids able to copy and paste from the internet, they are creating projects where there's just um, pages and pages of copied data and they haven't learnt anything. They haven't, they don't think it's valuable or important, but when they do projects like this, it's specific for their community. It's specific for their lived environment. And so, um, the questions that are in the template are, are fairly generic and they don't have to follow those questions, but it's a starting point. It scaffolds them to start a conversation because teenagers are awkward. Um, often, you know, they don't know where to start or what to ask. And so that's the point. It's, it scaffolds that first awkward phase and then they, they start to listen, they start to uh, relax and, and start to enjoy the conversation. And, and this is great for... Um, you know, uh, active listening. The kids have to active listen. They have the role playing an interview scenario. So this is great practice for when they are going to go for a job interview. They've got this um, awkward phase of, of not knowing where to look and jiggling around and, and being awkward. They practice this with these projects. And so that when, when they're going for um, job interviews, then they're more confident and they, they do have all the etiquette for uh, the social cues of conversation and, and interviews. So it's all great practice for them. Very amazing. It's <laughs> awesome. Yes, uh, I'm, I'm just thinking like right now we're living in what will be historical moments and for students to build their own books like this would be so amazing thank yeah. you thank you so much for showing us this product it's just so amazing and i can start thinking about uh several of the teachers that would really benefit uh from this uh, i have a few friends that are in the history and ela department that yeah, would absolutely. love something like this and so, as, a Google, as a Google partner, there's lots of opportunities to showcase your your case studies at conferences and you know different um, meetings and things like that because this is brand new. Uh, we've been in Australia and, and Singapore for the last couple of years and generated great case studies, but it's a, it's a ground floor opportunity for teachers to start generating some great case studies in your community so that we can showcase them over there. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to move on to our next section, and there's something I want to talk about as far as we were talking earlier about, about security, and one of the things that I want to talk about is password security. Education should be mobile with ACE apps. Okay, so one of the Android apps that I want to really showcase is called LastPass. And the um, I don't get paid by LastPass at all. It's just the password manager that I use because it's just so amazing. I use it on my Android phone and it's also an extension. And you'll see, I don't think you can see my extensions right here, but it's also a Chrome extension. So it saves my passwords. It's free. To begin with so that's why i use it now one of the things about password management is that it it's difficult to remember all your passwords and if you use the same passwords that you use for your bank account and the same password that you use for your gaming account or the same password that you use for shopping those passwords should not be the same, but it's very difficult to remember every single password and the account or the email that you use for every account, especially when we're in school. It's difficult to remember all the accounts and all the passwords that we're supposed to be using. And the reason as to why I recommend LastPass is because it saves 
or it encrypts locally and it saves that encrypted data in the cloud. And they do not save the password. They have no access to it unless they this is decrypted locally. Um, again, it, it's just something that I've used. It's something that saves me from a bunch of headaches when it comes to password management. Uh, talk about digital citizenship and student security and password security is what I'm getting at here. So any comments, anything else you want to add? Me? <laughs> yes. Um, oh, no, it just, it, I hope um, this stimulates some ideas and teachers and um, different topics that they really want to showcase in their town or maybe their class and community and get these kids going out there and collecting some of these amazing stories and let's start showcasing them, We're giving all sorts of different people a voice. And it's not just in English, it can be any language. And it, let's, start, sí. let's start sharing some amazing stories. Muchísimas gracias. I want to thank you so much for allowing me and my audience grow professionally. I am very grateful for the effort you took to share your thoughts and experience with what is Family Book Forum, that technology that you created. It's just so amazing. Thanks, thank Carol. you. Thank you. And thank you again for being part of this episode. Again, this episode is aced.tech slash 34. Um, one last thing before we sign off, I just want to say that I do have a giveaway. I need to turn off my green screen for this. Uh, I do have a giveaway as um, I'm going to be giving away since I'm starting my podcast with a new view. Uh, it's going to be live most of the time. It's uh, I'm giving away some ed tech swag so i'm gonna start first with the pear deck pair and this is thanks to pear deck uh, a few items that i got is uh a vr goggles by hmh and a merch cube so if you're into vr and ar here is another giveaway i'm doing um Something a little more simple is Lego Education. It's a simple set. It's, uh, it creates one item, and that is very amazing. And then there's the cell phone giveaway that I'm going to be giving, which is a stylus, a phone charger. It's inside the box. And this is a portable charger. Excuse me. This is the phone charger, thanks to Clearview, uh, ClearTouch. And uh, it's a wireless quick charge. And, of course, I'm going to be giving away some stickers, the EduGoog Droid stickers. So if you're interested in being part of this giveaway, visit j.mp slash acetech20, A-C-E-D-T-E-C-H-2-0. And, Carrie, thank you again so much for being part of this episode. Thank and you. Thank you. Thank you. So, have a good one. Thank you for listening to Aced Tech. I would love to hear from you. Send me a message on aced.tech slash feedback, where you can record your voice, tag me on Twitter, or call me to leave me a voice message. If you enjoyed this episode, subscribe on the Google or Apple Podcast app or anywhere podcasts are found. I'm Mr. G. Cheers.